How the hell are there, neighborinos? So, let's just jump into the titular story of the night. The PlayStation 5 and potentially Xbox One or 2, Scarlet, Lockhart, Anaconda, whatever you want to call it. The new Xbox as well as the PlayStation 5. So, I don't typically touch on politics on this channel for one particular reason. No matter what you believe, chances are you're going to make somebody angry. And in this case, politics is going to make me very angry. And chances are you as well, if you're watching this. So, I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but currently there is a trade war going on between the United States and China. As a part of this trade war, both sides are putting on import tariffs on a lot of the products that the other country is sending in. That results in higher endpoint market, higher end consumer price points that are proportional to those tariff values. In this case, there is a 25% tariff that is going to be voted on on the 17th of June. And if it does get approved, it would likely go into effect on the 24th of June. So, while, while we can't expect those to be coming in until maybe middle to late next year, we have no idea how long this trade war is going to be going on. As a result, that could result in a, like I said, 25% markup on those already expensive consoles. And just so you don't have to pull out your pull out your phone and check the math, I'll do it for you. 25% markup on a $500 console is going to run you $625. $625 on an otherwise $500 system. Simply because of that massive price point, that could result in possible delays of the system. All because of this stupid trade war that's going on that's impacting well it, it's impacting commerce all around the country but this obviously this is going to impact us as gamers quite a bit and it's going to deal it's going to affect well it, it's going to affect the entire market since as I'm sure you probably guessed by now both Sony and Microsoft are the biggest players in the console market right now. So, simply because of that markup, marked up price, like I said, could end up with delays or a higher $600 markup price. Okay, so this next story is about some tracking problems that some users of the Rift S have been experiencing and how to properly address them. So there are a few different ways that you could go about attempting to fix it. I, there's about five that this article lists and this original article that you can reference later is going to be in the description down below so you don't have to listen to me talk constantly for hours on end to try to fix it. So the first one is to try to turn off USB power management. To find the overall setting for this, you gotta search for edit power plan in the start menu, and then you click on the option that says change advanced power settings. And then from there, you've gotta expand the, expand the option that says USB settings, USB suspend setting and of course you go to disable. Then after that you need to disallow Windows from turning off the Rift S specifically. So from there you gotta go to the device manager, go to USB controllers, right click each instance of the hub, go to properties, and in the power mat power management hub, you uncheck allow the computer to turn off the device to save power. 
When it comes right down to it, if you're on desktop, you shouldn't need to really save power anyway. Granted, it's going to be a power drain anyway, regardless, but you've got a you've got a wall jack to pull from instead of you know like a laptop battery or something. You should be able to do this for all your hubs with 3.0 or super speed in the name. So go ahead and run through those. The next option is to try all the USB hubs. And depending on how the motherboard is set up, different USBs could be connected to different controllers on the motherboard. So it's listing on here on this article that one user had success plugging it into USB 2 for about 30 seconds and then back into USB 3 which it's actually designed for. And then just to make sure that you don't try the same port twice, you'll want to take pictures just to make sure that you're tracking everything properly. Oh yeah, and don't forget to disconnect the the display port cable every time you switch the USB port. So you'll have to pull out a pair of cables at once in order to truly reset the USBs. So one option that the article lists is reseating the cable. So basically the cable on a headset could end up coming loose causing causing connection problems. And the fix it says for that is to disconnect the cable for 5 seconds before plugging it back in and then also doing it on the PC end. And it also says here, the USB port should be plugged in for five seconds before the display port. The second to last option it has is to repair the Oculus software. So in order to do that, you'll want to go to oculus.com slash setup. You'll want to click on the option that says download. That next big question is all about keeping your information safe on the Quest. So although Facebook does own Oculus, you don't necessarily need a Facebook account to access the Quest or the Quest or the Oculus Store. It's more for it's more for finding friends and stuff on on all that stuff. So as far as keeping your information safe on the Quest, there's a couple ways you can do that. First, you can, you know, avoid putting your personal information out because you don't want to get kidnapped and lose your house in a raging fire. But, like the, uh, those vendors and stuff that try to ask for your personal information, they do aim to be transparent and they do tell you what they're going to be using it for. However, in the event you do want to change your privacy settings or remove your Facebook account, those steps are going to be in the description down below. I believe that's a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now. If you guys are still here, don't forget to check in tomorrow when I'll be going over an opinion piece that talks about how Facebook needs to change their virtual reality model going forward.